Welcome to Life Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and through the internet deliver it to you. Today's message is part four in a five part series called The Inn, and today's message is specifically entitled Making Room, based off of Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, and John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. So, let us dive into the Word today. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was first the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That's from the Gospel of Luke. Now for John. In the beginning of the word in the beginning the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everyone or to everything that was created and his life brought life to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sends a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light, he was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Amen. Dietrich Bonhoeffer opened his book, The Cost of Discipleship, with the following proclamation. Cheap grace is the deadly enemy of our church. We are fighting today for costly grace. Now, I'm sure by now most of you are familiar with who uh, Reverend Dr. Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, it was. We spent some time uh, in the last episode discussing him and uh, what he stood for. But for those of you who may have missed it, Bonhoeffer was a Lutheran pastor and theologian in Germany during the time of Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich. He formed the Confessing Church along with other clergy who were resisting the Nazi regime, which included underground seminaries equipping pastors with the true Christian faith and the tools to resist conforming to the Nazi regime. Now, as I mentioned before, the Nazis wanted to unify all Protestant churches into a pro-Nazi Protestant Reich Church. Bonhoeffer stood against that and resisted through the confessing church. Though a pacifist, he ended up joining a plot to assassinate Hitler. And for his part, he was arrested and eventually executed at the Flossenburg concentration camp in April of 1945, just two weeks before the Allies came in and liberated that camp. Two weeks. While Bonhoeffer and other clergy led underground resistance, movement, resistance movements, many of the German churches and pastors pledged their allegiance to the Third Reich. This tragic fact reminds me of tonight's scripture. Tonight's scripture in John. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. So the Word became human and made his home among us. We could talk about baby Jesus tonight, and it would allow us to hide behind cheap grace. A grace in which we are not called. A grace in which we need not confess anything. A grace which costs us nothing. Rather, we are reminded by Bonhoeffer that cheap grace is the deadly enemy of our church. We are fighting today for costly grace. Instead of focusing on one night over 2,000 years ago where expectant parents couldn't find room at, at the inn, let us look at the big picture. Jesus came into the world, and the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people but even they, even they, rejected him. Now, my friends, it would be easy for us, even in this verse, to point the finger back at the ancient world and shout, How could you? He was the Christ, didn't you know? How could you? But it seems that this was not just a first century problem a problem in which only the people in Jesus' day seemed to not recognize who Christ was or who Christ is. This doesn't seem to just be a first century problem, but also a 20th century problem. After all, the risen Jesus presented himself through Bonhoeffer and the confessing church. But the majority of God's people rejected him and pledged their allegiance to Hitler. And it would be easy to point our finger back at Nazi Germany and shout, How could you? You should have known better. But it seems that this was not just a 20th century problem but is a 21st century problem. Look at the churches in America, in America alone, aligning themselves with political parties and candidates, all the while ignoring what Christ commanded us to do as Christians. Look at all of the people aligning themselves up with with the world and its worldviews, Worldviews that stand opposed to what Christ did on this earth, what Christ taught, and all that Christ stood for. That stands opposed to Christ's self-sacrificing uh, act on the cross, which redeems not just some, but all the world, should they choose to believe in him. All the while... These people who claim to be Christian are ignoring what Christ commanded us to do as Christians. Friends, cheap grace is the enemy of our church. We are fighting today for costly grace. We are being called to make room for the Christ. In fact, we're not called, we're not just being called to make room but to clear the room for Christ and Christ alone. I want to end with one more thing from Bonhoeffer. He writes, 
Grace is costly because it calls us to follow. And it is grace because it calls us to follow Jesus Christ. It is costly because it costs a person his or her life. And it is grace because it gives a person the only true life. It is costly because it condemns sin and grace because it justifies the sinner. Above all, it is costly because it cost God the life of his Son. You were bought at a price. And what has cost God much cannot be cheap for us. Above all, it is grace because God did not reckon his Son too dear a price to pay for our life but delivered him up for us. Costly grace is the incarnation of God. Costly grace is the incarnation of God. Sisters and brothers, don't settle for cheap grace, for that is not grace at all. Let this Christmas be the Christmas in which you clear out your room for Christ and for Christ alone. And I invite you to start going to church if you don't already. Start worshiping and being coming a part of the body of Christ wherever you are. If you're in our area, I'd love to have you here if you don't come. But be a part of the body of Christ wherever you are, so that Christ, through us all together, may bring transformation into this broken world. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, I thank you and praise you for this challenging message. Lord, we are a people who often do not make room for you. In fact, we put so many other things before you that we just slam the door in your face. That's what we do. Lord, you've called us to not just make room, but to clear the room, to make straight the path of the Lord so that we may walk in your righteousness and be your people. But Lord, that is only going to happen if we stop excusing ourselves and we start seeking something deeper and more costly than the cheap grace we'd rather have, only because it's convenient for us. Lord, grace isn't about convenience. Grace is about love, sacrificial, pure, unadulterated godly love. Open our hearts to it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And with that, my friends, I would like to welcome, or not welcome you, but I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas. And I want to, to leave you with this. Open your hearts to Christ. Make Christ the priority in your life. If you do, my friends, you will not only be blessed richly, but you will be a blessing to others. Go in peace.